Hello, for this problem we've got a steel cable that's supporting a 60 kilogram mass as shown below. Uh, we've got some pulling force that we're going to be exerting on the other end of the cable. Uh, it runs a quarter of the way around a steel cylinder, um, so this is kind of like a corner maybe. Um, and <clears throat> we want the co static coefficient of friction between the cable and the cylinder is 0.3. We want to determine two things. First, we want to determine what is the minimum required pulling force that we need to lift the mass, so to start pulling this thing up. Uh, and then there's what is the minimum force required to keep the mass from falling, uh, which is going to be a separate number. It's going to be a little bit smaller. Uh, simply, what do we need to do to keep it from moving the other way? So I'm going to call this part A and this part B. And let's start by looking at uh, situation A. Uh, so for situation A, this is a belt friction problem, even though there's no pulleys here, uh, and really no belt, it's a, a cable. Uh, but we've got a circle. We've got two pieces of the cable. This one up here is F pull, which we don't know. We're trying to figure, figure that out. And this one down here is going to be simply the weight. And the force is going to be equal to uh, 9.81 times 60 kilograms. Uh, and that'll be my just the weight force of my, my body here. Another important thing to note on our diagram is the contact angle. And so this contact angle is going to be a quarter of the circle, 90 degrees, or for our formulas, we're going to need to list that in radians, and that's going to be pi over 2 radians. And so the, if we think about situation one, what is the minimum required pulling force required to lift the mass, um, we can kind of draw in which way the friction force is going. And so if I'm pulling this up, the mass is going up, the pulling force, the uh, cable up here is going this way, and the friction force is going to be opposing that. And so the friction force, if it's moving up, is going to be pulling the whole thing down. All right, so now I've got my uh, equation. So T2 max equals T1 times E to the mu static beta. And so <clears throat> I need to figure out, remember T2 max is always going to be the bigger force. And so if I've got the weight pulling down and the friction force pulling down, F pull uh, for this whole thing to be in equilibrium needs to be the bigger force. So F pull is T2, or T2 max. Uh, and T1 is going to be this force down here, the weight force. Uh, so 9.81 times 60, uh, and that weight will be in newtons. We multiply that by E to the static coefficient of friction, which is 0.3, times beta, which is our contact angle uh, of this pi over 2. All right, so we've got all of the numbers. Uh, we simply plug it all into our calculator, and we find that F pull is equal to 942 0.9 newtons, and that is going to be to lift the whole thing. So this is for part A. All right, if we move on to part B, start over here, we are going to have some of the same stuff, uh, but there's going to be a little, it's going to be a little bit different. And so let's draw our diagram again. And again, we are going to have the cable coming off in two locations. Uh, this one up here is going to be still be F pull. And this one down here is still the weight force, which is 9.81 times 60. Still have the same contact angle of pi over 2 radians. 
Uh, but this time, I'm just trying to keep the whole thing from sliding in the other direction, from going down. And so in this case, friction is actually helping me. So the, this friction force is going in the opposite direction from what it was doing before. And so that changes, we have still the same equation, T2 max equals T1 times E to the mu static beta, but now we've switched the two pieces. So now the friction force and the pulling force are going in the same direction, so this weight force has to be the larger force, and the larger force is T2 max. So now we have 9.81 times 60, that the units for that are going to be newtons. Uh, it's going to be equal to T1, which is the smaller force, or F pull, times E to the 0.3 times pi over 2. All right, so now we need to solve for F pull. M much of the same numbers, but uh, we've switched those two values, T1 and T2. So if we solve for this, we find F pull is going to be equal to 367.4 newtons. And this is to keep it from falling. So this is for part B. All right, so we can see that, you know, before we needed uh, about nine hundred, more than 900 newtons to lift the whole thing, uh, but we need uh, just more than 300 newtons to keep the whole thing from falling. So the uh, whole intermediate range in there, where for pulling with somewhere between those two forces, uh, it simply wouldn't go anywhere. Uh, friction is going to be keeping it in place. Uh, so with that, we've solved our problem. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again.